Well, hello, my fellow car modelers. How are you doing today? I want to touch something that was talked about. You know, we're going to look at this kit, kind of, sort of. This is actually a project I was working on. We're going to talk about something. Not so much this project, but it has a situation on it. Let me just get the chassis out here. That uh, I want to talk a little more about that we covered in the last video about um, properly getting rid of the parting line on that 57 Chevy. And we talked about ghosting. And if you can see, let's see if we can see there. We got the, I don't know if this is glued on. I think it is. I can't take the rear end out. But do you see down, right down, see this, my pointer here, right there. Can you see that ghosting? Do you see that? And you can kind of see it right here. I tried to get rid of these ejector pin marks. They're ghosting. I got lazy on this chassis. And I'm going to tell you why that happens. I'm going to explain the whole thing. And why doing what I suggested in the last video will take care of that. Well, you could really see the ghosting bad. So you can get a good look at that. Can you see that ghosting? Yeah. We're going to talk about that. So, here we go. I might do a Lucas Unbuilds on this now that you guys have seen this, this Hemi Dart that I was working on. I just was building a simple out of the box, but I am just a stickler no matter what, no matter how quick of a slam out of the box build I'm doing. I like to get rid of all parting lines, ejector pin marks, everything like that. And also the dreaded, what you see down in there, if we can catch the light right, you can see right down there was the copyright and whatever other stuff that Ravel felt they needed to put on the chassis. Why they can't put it on that side, like that, is fine. Why they got to put it on the on the shiny side, so we say. Hold on a moment, need a refreshment. And it's not a beer, it's just a shameless plug for that company. I don't even know, it's the first time I'm having one. Oh, it's good, I like it. Anyways, I like the colors, it's very Days of Thundery. Don't pass on the outside of turn four. Hey, wait a second, I might have to do a fictitious race car with that uh, sponsor. Okay, I'm getting off track, sorry people. Just a quick video following, following up the 57. I want to go over how this happens, why this happens, and why, yeah, and what you have to do to make sure it doesn't happen. Of course, I didn't do it on this model. So what you need to do, like what I talked about, we're going to get a little more heavier in it, on that video of the 57 Chevy I just dropped yesterday, you want to, we're working on it on this one, you want to get rid of, like on this, because of the particular car I'm doing, there was a marker light here. I've been sanding. You can see I've been sanding. I think there was a, a logo there or emblem. I think there were some emblems back here. Sand, it look fantastic, right? It looks totally gone. It looks totally gone. There's like a little Chrysler emblem there, the marker light that would be right there. We got rid of it all. Worked our butts off to get rid of that stuff. Here's the thing. I can guarantee you, on the first prime session I do with this body, all that stuff's going to show. It's going to show. Oh, it's going to show. That is what we all call ghosting. Now I'm going to explain to you why it happens. The physics of it. The science of ghosting. Whenever you start sanding onto styrene, you're basically opening it up. Okay? Or what they call cutting. It's like when you're buffing paint and stuff, they always call it, you're cutting the paint. And like enamels, if you cut the paint with sandpaper, with enamels lots of times, it's hard on the outside, but underneath, it's still kind of gooey, liquidy, and that's when you get that balling when you're sanding uh, enamels and it's balling up and filling your sandpaper up. 
it's kind of all the same principle. Underneath, it's like there's an outer shell to the styrene, and when you cut open that outer shell, it exposes the styrene that has been covered up. So, when you go ahead and sh shoot primer down, and there was once, you know, even more so, you're going in deeper because there was a raised portion that was your your script or your marker light here that you sanded off. Well, you're down some real deep levels of the uh, of the styrene epidermis, and you will get a different reaction with that styrene compared to the styrene that's just out here. Even if you lightly scuff it, this this stuff that uh, is around what you sanded off and uh, over here, it's not going to react to the chemicals in the primer that the, the really cut down styrene, that exposed styrene that was inside, embedded inside, you know, your, your body here, your, your piece of plastic, your piece of styrene and it will swell and raise up so it's no longer level with what you sanded where you don't feel it you go why is it showing the the styrene is actually swelling with the reaction of the primer so what you want to do is you want to go ahead and do your prime session with with your sanding pads or whatever you choose about a thousand grit this is 800 to 1,000, which that means it's 800 grit dry. It's about 1,000 grit when it's wet. And you want to do ahead and you go ahead and block it out after you've primered, wet sanding it. After that, you go shoot it again. Then you come back. And then after that prime, second prime is nice and set up, you want to go ahead and block sand again just like that guarantee you you're gonna do it a third time the third time you might see by that point still a little bit of ghosting but every time you do it you're gonna see less ghosting so however many times it takes I'm not gonna say it's gonna handle in in two coats I'm not gonna say it's gonna handle in four coats you prime and sand that's I always say that point of, of the project it's prime sand prime sand prime sand until you don't have any more ghosting. When you hit that final coat of primer and you don't see it anymore, and I'm guarantee it's not going to be any less than three. It probably won't be any more than five, what I call prime sessions. You sand and prime. That last one will be your block sanding final. Block sanding to be prepared for paint. That's when you want to go and you block out everything with your sanding pads and then I move to 32, 36 depending on how far I want to go with it and then I paint. It depends on the paint that I'm using. And you are going to have a beautiful beautiful paint job without ejector pin marks showing like that or those horrific terrible you can get in the light. You can see it back down in there. The copyrights that were put on all the lettering that was put on across there. Yeah. I got to get back to building this and just kind of not worry about that stuff. It's not going to really be that kind of model. But that stuff bugs me that much that I stopped working on this model. 68 Hemikuda. Heck yeah. Anyways. So that's, that's how we roll with it. That is what ghosting is. That's why it happens. That's why the way to get rid of that is you prime and sand. And that now explains why you prime and sand. I hope this helped. Hey, man. I uh, think I need to get back to doing some model building. Because why do we do this model building? That's easy. That is so easy. Because it's fun. Here's the producers.